Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Friendship Circle. If you're already part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. Today we are talking about the iconic Stacey Dash. Hater or lover, she is still an icon off of clueless alone but she has done so much other work but over the years stacy dash has faced so much backlash and hate and has been named by many sources at one point of time as america's most hated woman the black community didn't want nothing to do with her the white community didn't want nothing to do with her and it just seemed like overall no one wanted anything to do with her and it's like how did that happen we all love stacy dash this documentary is going to start from the beginning from her her childhood all the way down to her untimely demise with some of the comments that she stated and of course I will be as unbiased as possible I hold no opinions she is such a gorgeous and beautiful woman as usual before we get deep into the details of why she was America's most hated woman and the things that she's done as usual we are going to get into some beauty secrets and diet as well as her hobbies etc so actress Stacey Dash says her secret to maintaining youthful skin is establishing good habits early on and sticking to them. I've been washing my face before I go to bed since I was 15, she tells people.com. As for her current skincare routine, Dash focuses on streamlining. I keep it very, very simple, she tells latina.com. I do eye cream and sunscreen every day. Even if you got olive skin or brown skin, you still need sunscreen, she explains. And of course, nothing trumps a healthy lifestyle and a sound mind. I work out really hard four days a week. I eat healthy and I drink a a lot of water she tells people.com and thinking young is key fear will aid you I enjoy life says dash her favorite color is black and she loves Mexican food her hobbies include reading fishing theater shopping dancing and artwork and now with all of that said let's jump into this video okay for many who are not too familiar with Stacy dash Stacy Loretta dash was born January 20th 1967 she is an American actress and former talk show host. Dash played Dionne Marie Davenport in the 1995 feature film Clueless and its television series of the same name. And I did do a Clueless breakdown, which I'll put in the end card in end screen so you can go check out the breakdown for that movie Clueless also iconic movie. She has also appeared in the films Moving, Mo Money, Renaissance Man, and View from the Top. Other television work by Dash includes appearances in the series CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, Single Ladies, and the reality TV show Celebrity Circus. She has also appeared in music videos for Carl Thomas, Emotional, and of course Kanye West, All Falls Down. As far as her childhood goes, she had a pretty tragic childhood, guys, and this is triggering, so we are going to talk about some heavy topics, if you know what I mean, but I'll try to censor the words for YouTube, but if you're sensitive to those type of topics, if you catch my drift, this is your trigger warning right now. So born in the Bronx borough of New York City, Dash is an African-American and Mexican descent. She is the daughter of Dennis Dash and Linda Dash Lopez. Dash has a stepfather, Cecile Holmes, and a younger brother, Darian Dash, who is the founder of DME Interactive, the first publicly traded African-American-led website company. Her first cousin, fun fact, is Damon Dash, the one that was dating Aaliyah, yes, the former CEO and co-founder of Rockefeller Records. Dash attended Paramus High School, graduating in 1985. Dash has spoken openly about past traumas in her personal life. She has at various times revealed that she was, you know, taken advantage of physically, if you know what I mean, by a 16 year old who knew her family starting at age four and she became addicted to Coca-Cola as a teenager, not the actual drink. It was shocking when the actress claimed that her parents introduced her to substances very young. According to her, her mother gave her Coca-Cola as a gift for her 16th birthday. And of course you guys know what Coca-Cola is. I can't say it for YouTube. But unfortunately, Stacey Dash's parents, Dennis and Linda Dash, have passed on, so there is no way they can confirm this. As a result of her early introduction to drugs, she became addicted, which had a significant effect on her childhood. For Stacey Dash, she has had to live with fighting and staying off substances. However, she said she holds no grudges with her late parents. In an interview with Dr. Oz, she said, in these five years, my blessing, greatest blessing is that 
only have I been able to be honest with myself and became a better person. I've been able to understand my parents and that they did love me and that they're doing the best they could and that they were just sick. They were addicted. Part of me felt like I deserved it because what I was coming from was no better, she said. I didn't have an identity. Dash has attributed her openness with such topics to her desire to be honest with her children, feeling that being honest is the best way to protect them and to let them and others know that she is not a victim, but a survivor. She is supportive of the right to keep and bear arms, crediting the use of weapons with saving her life after being sensually taken advantage of at gunpoint by an ex-boyfriend because she was able to retrieve her own weapon, a 22 revolver, and shoot at him, scaring him away. She said her ex-boyfriend stalked her after they broken up and, you know, forcefully put himself on her at gunpoint once while her young son was still sleeping nearby. He had the Glock to my head and I thought, my son is in that crib right there, Dash said. I thought, no, you're not going to do this to me. My son's life was more important to me than my own. Dash told people that the next time her ex came back, she had, she had her weapon on her and used it to get him out of her home. I wanted to end his life, she said, but it scared him away. Dash made her first television appearance in the NBC crime drama pilot, Pharaoh, for the people starring Valerie Harper and Ed O'Neill in 1982, which did not make it past its pilot season. Her first notable appearance was as Michelle in the 1985 The Cosby Show episode, Denise's Friends. Dash's first substantial television role was in the 1988 series TV 101. The series was canceled after 13 episodes, and Dash's first major film role was in the Richard Pryor comedy The Moving in 1998. Dash received her big break with the 1995 teen comedy film Clueless. Dash played Sher's high school best friend Dion Davenport. And although Dash was 28 at the time, yes, yeah, she was 28 during that movie. She played a high schooler. In 1996, the film spawned a television spinoff of the same name in which Dash reprised her role as Dion. The series ran from 1996 to 1999. Dash posed Bear in the August 2006 issue of Playboy. Also in 2006, she was featured in singer Marquise Houston's video for Favorite Girl and launched her own lingerie line called Letters of Marquis. Dash appeared as a recurring character in the television series The Game in the early 2009. And in 2011, Dash starred in her first season of VH1's first scripted series, Single Ladies, playing Valerie Val Stokes, described as a good girl looking for a good man. And on August 31st, 2011, it was reported that she would leave the series in order to focus on her family. And in 2012, Dash starred as Lisa, the female lead in the film Dysfunctional Friends. And in 2012, Dash was featured in Funny or Die and YouTube broadcast trailers and shorts for her web series, Stacey Dash is Normal. The scripted series launched in 2013. Now, let's get into her scandals. Dash voted for Barack Obama in the 2008 US presidential election. In 2012, she switched her party affiliation from Democratic to Republican and endorsed Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney. In response to critical online comments she received for supporting Romney, Dash stated it was her opinion and that she did not understand the vitriol. Vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan thanked Dash for supporting his ticket. Since the 2012 election, Stacey has publicly expressed her political views, and in April 2013, she criticized music artist Jay-Z and Beyonce's trip to Cuba. And in 2016, with regard to the debate over use of gender-specific bathrooms, she said that transgender rights infringe upon her own rights. And Dash supported Republic candidate Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but this, of course, triggered many people who initially supported her because you know how much everybody hates Trump. <laughs> On May 28, 2014, Fox News announced that Dash had been hired as a contributor for cultural analysis and commentary. Mm. Mm. Cultural analysis and commentary, basically a black face to speak on black issues. On a December 7, 2015 edition of Outnumbered, Dash made a remark about President Barack Obama's address regarding Islamic T-word. I can't say that word but you guys get what I'm saying, the T word. That took place the day before, suggesting the president didn't give a ish about terrorism 
You guys know what I mean. Due to this remark, the network suspended her without pay for two weeks. Yeah, because that was a little too much. And in 2016, Dash received criticism when she argued that the BET Awards lied to black people about news regarding the boycotting of the Oscars due to lack of ethnic diversity and called for an end to Black History Month. She made a cameo at the 88th Academy Awards, repeating this sentiment. In addition, she criticized Jesse Williams' speech at the BT Awards, and on January 21st, 2017, Fox News announced that Dash contract would not be renewed. So from there, she went on to clarify that she meant no harm by her words that Black History Month and Black television networks were unnecessary. I'm saying we deserve more, she said. I just hope people understand that. I'm not judging, I'm coming from experience. So of course, even white people, which I guess she thought they were her allies in her stance, were really like, wow, you're like going too far, you're saying a lot, and they kind of all disassociated themselves from her. Twitter had a field day with her. There were so many videos even here on YouTube with her comments, and it was just like every week she was doing and saying more and more that just seemed so outlandish and like, you know, reading the room. Now this does begs a question that I want you guys to discuss in the comments. Please be respectful in that regards, but I'm really curious. Do you think that when you're a celebrity, controversial views should always be kept silent? Or should you be able to speak out what you feel even if none of us agree with it or understand it? I don't agree with a lot of things she said, but I also believe she can say what she wants to say. Like that's Go ahead, girl, do you. Say what you wanna say, cause you think it regardless in private. But I also understand that when you are a public figure and you're influential and you have people that look up to you, there's a certain responsibility that comes with that. And there are words that you say that can, you know, not just trigger people, but also trigger people to act, you know, encourage or give, give life to certain ideologies in people that probably was dormant before and that increases what they do. Like we've seen throughout the last couple, two, three years, what has been going on, especially from ideologies that people have been at home listening to more podcasts, watching more videos, and we see how people react based on those ideologies and talking points and opinions. And it kind of just creates this very toxic world. But it came to the point where people could no longer give their opinion. And we saw even on social media sites like Instagram. It, it's getting pretty interesting to see how if you don't agree with one narrative, they do kind of just, you know, break you down. But on Stacey Dash's case, I would not say that was the case. A lot of the things she said were irresponsible and were hurtful, especially to a large community of people. And you do have to be responsible with how you say things but it does also lead on to that greater question when you have like the candace owens which is stacy dash 2.0 do you find yourself not supporting people that don't agree with you a thousand percent that's the question i want to ask do you find yourself canceling people who don't vote politically like you vote or do who don't have the same cultural understanding or opinions is yourself do you find yourself distancing yourself from them and why and then i do kind of see where i think she was trolling guys <laughs> that's my opinion i do think she was irresponsibly trolling to kind of you know celebrities get very obsessed and high off of attention and they get high off of trending whether good or bad a lot of people think the more hate they throw towards a celebrity oh my god i know i'm getting to them and i'm hurting them while the celebrity is doing more for you to fuel that hate because it brings more money in their pockets she was getting gigs she was trending every week and she seemed to have loved it in my opinion so i do think she was trolling and saying things intentionally but there were things that she said that i do think the public because they already hated her were like inflating with that said we're going to move on okay because on february 26 2018 dash filed to run in california's 44th congressional district in the 2018 congressional election as a republican on joining the race dash said she wanted to free people from the shackles of a plantation mentality dash withdrew from the congressional race on march 30th 2018 and on march 11 2021 dash stated in an interview with daily mail being a supporter of trump has put me in some kind of box that i don't belong in but he's not the president i'm going to give the president that we have right now a chance as far as her personal life 
She has been married quite a few times. Dash has two children. She has a son named Austin, born from her relationship with singer Christopher Williams. And this is sad, but she stated, when I got pregnant, I was doing a lot of substance and I didn't want to live. I wanted to die, she said. I was going to have an abortion to remove the child. I was crying and I said to God, please tell me what to do. And God told me, keep your son. I whipped the IV out of my arm and said, I'm keeping my son. This beautiful moment was short lived for the actress as she said her ex then tracked her down. He held her, he was the one that basically slept with her while her son was there and then she fired at him. That was him, okay? Christopher Williams, now nah, let's talk. So she did like go on to marry producer Brian Lavelle on July 16, 1999, and they divorced in the mid 2000s. And from 2005 to 2006, Dash was married to British executive James Maybe, CEO of Sports Logistics. Different sources say the father of Dash's daughter Lola is either Lavelle or Maybe. Dash married lawyer Jeffrey Marty on April 6, 2018, in Florida, and she said that she met Marty 10 days before the wedding. In addition to her two children, Dash's stepmother to three of Marty's children, right? Dash was arrested on September 29, 2019 at her apartment in Pasco County, Florida on a domestic charge after an argument with her husband, Jeffrey Marty. She pleaded not guilty and the case was dropped October 3rd at the request of Marty who said Dash had been arrested over his objection. The couple's divorce was announced the following year. In October 2021, Dash opened up about her Vicodine addiction on the Dr. Oz show, stating that she was five years sober. Even though Stacy mentioned that she's been sober for a couple of years now, the black community still hasn't forgiven her for her comments, despite her coming out to say she has moved on from the angry woman that the world knew her to be. She's still not forgiven and anytime you say Stacey Dash, everybody kind of look like, ooh, no, next. <laughs> so that's pretty sad in itself for her. So I don't know if her career is redeemable, maybe in like five, 10 years, but there's things you do that are redeemable. And there's things you say that just are not and it just follows you. That's why I always tell celebrities, like when you're trying to be canceled, for engagement and for revenue and things be careful that you don't overdo it like you see kanye and kim and all of them they're doing all of this for their new show on hulu i'm convinced that's why they're doing it allegedly but when kanye was taking it too far with the whole pd thing and got his instagram and now he was getting down for shows people are starting to be outraged you guys saw how he stepped all the way back and all of a sudden he's trying to be chill with his girl not talking much the hype died down because he's like hey i wanted to take it far but not that far to be that canceled and kanye all of a sudden is okay again as you can make yourself irredeemable and those things can follow you and your legacy so sound off in the comments let me know what you think comment subscribe engage with this video if you like the music you're listening to all links are in the description as well as my socials and turn on your notification bell for our next person which will be coming up soon which was heavily requested i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time